Hello, I'm Andre from SIP, and I'm glad you're back. We're doing something very special today. We're taking Alex's engine apart and see what the wear is like. We can see from the dirt on a vehicle that we have already driven close to 1000 kilometers. In the previous episodes, we have already installed our new gearbox, which we developed, as well as a new clutch, which we have tried before in a different design state. And finally, we installed a new crankshaft. Since it's a fairly powerful engine, we can already make a certain statement about the wear. For this, I will disassemble the engine and remove the alternator half. Let's see what awaits us. The gear oil looks relatively good. It has just gotten pretty dark. After 1000 kilometers, however, it should get changed. The period is possibly even shorter, so that you should already change the oil after 500 kilometers. Some never change it though. Oh, come on! The exhaust must be disassembled. You can always look at a spark plug, even if it's not incredibly meaningful. It's quite light, and the carburetor is also a bit thin. But it all held up so far. It's nice how brown it is. Looks cool. We can see that there were no impacts. It is also not grey, which would be a sign of overheating. You can see that the cylinder still in good condition it has not jammed. We can see that it has minimal friction marks, which can often be seen on the exhaust. But it looks quite good. It's normal that you can still see the cross grinding after 1000 km. As I already said, the carburetor adjustment was still a bit thin, which is fine. I did it without a clamp. You can see that in the piston and cylinder picture. What you can look at first is the crankshaft and how much you can tilt the connection rod on its side. Unfortunately, in this state, it's not well measurable. But it gives us new information about the wear. That is from the upper piston, from the lower piston pin, from the stroke pin, from the bearing, and the stroke pin from the crankshaft. So, the lower connection not rod bearing. That was easy. When everything is new, the rollers run from this bearing across the entire length. The older the crankshaft gets, the narrower the raceway of the rollers get as they become more and more worn. This means that they become smaller at the outer ends and remain the same size in the middle until they eventually wear out and the crankshaft is gone. Normally the crankshaft is a varying part on a two-stroke engine, but after 1000 km everything should be fine. It still has 0.5 mm leeway on the sides, so it's safe to say it's fine even without a feeler gog. We're going to take the engine half off and see in which condition our gearbox and clutch are. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
There it is, your pee. After removing the engine half, the first thing you always notice is the loose kickstarter gear. But that is completely normal, because it is only attached to the auxiliary shaft. The counter shaft has gotten a few running marks from the kickstarter gear. But since the counter shaft is a Benelli product, it has nothing to do with our products. Here we have the driver's shaft, which is actually our main concern. The gears themselves look great, because they still have all teeth on them. The surfaces of the teeth have become shinier, but you can still see the machining direction from the manufacturer. So it can be said that there is no visible wear. The gearbox is simply well worn in. I'm going to take off all the gears now. The most critical gear is often the third gear. And if the transmission got damaged, it is usually the second, third or fourth. But nothing is missing here. Here you can sometimes still see this white grease, which I put in everywhere. There are also no friction marks on the inner surface of the gears that run on the drive shaft. It is still the polished original state. Looks great. There are also differences in the drive shaft itself. For example, some drive shafts come from India that have improper heat treatment and hardness. This wear in very quickly and you would see that here. But we have a slight shadow here from the running of the gears. To test whether it has worn in, I run my fingernail up and down. My fingernail would get caught in the lead and tracks on the process. But that doesn't happen here, so the shaft is like new in my opinion. The shift detent bearing has also left a shadow here, but no more running marks or indentations. I would say it's a very good condition. Perfect. We will now remove the clutch and see how the wear is, and if it can be removed easily. Und ähm, wie da der Verschleiß ist. Hier ist der Klatsch cover mit dem Pusherrad. Das kann sometimes smell. Which cannot happen to us, because we have a ball bearing pressure plate. Here's the ball bearing pressure plate, and the bearing is still moving. Then we need something to block the clutch. For this we used a good old clutch assembly tool. But since this is an inverse clutch, it won't work. It is possible that the lining slip through and the inner basket and not rotate at the same time. For this you need another holding tool, which we have also developed, but it is not yet available. Here's the nut from the clutch, and we'll see if it really is as easy to remove as promised. Here comes the holding tool and... There it is. We can see that these tabs are deforming a lot, which is always critical with closer couplings these days. These are super easy to take apart. And I would almost say, they are like new. But not quite. Here you can see that they are already minimally broken in. This isn't a 12 HP engine either, which means they were already strained. On the thrust washer you can see all the brass washers that haven't broken in either. It looks great. Pico bello. Can you rotate it a little? You're filming. But I'm Andre, German pun intended. I was told to see if the clutch gear is also badly worn. Fine by me. You can still see the transverse grooves that were created during manufacturing, just like the gears. There are no vertical grooves visible and is not yet mirror smooth. 
In addition, no teeth are missing and it is not broken in. In my opinion, this all looks very good. I am now reassembling the engine so that Alex can travel again in the summer. Thanks for your attention. I'd love for you to hit the bell button and join us again for the next episode. With Alex scooter, we still need to adjust the carburetor properly. For this we will use an exhaust gas temperature gog, EGT, and the lambda sensor. I'm looking forward to next time and hope you'll join us again. I wish you all the best and have fun until then. Bye bye, Ja Andre.